a warm welcome back to the Forensics Detailing Channel. The day is ending, but tomorrow I'm going to be getting up at the crack of dawn and uh, <laughs> I'm going to be detailing all day on this lovely car outside here. As you might have seen, it belongs to Dan's Timeless Classics. Ooh, but look at it, John. It's already detailed. It's immaculately clean. No, you're looking at it from a camera, guys. So, you know, the closer we get, the closer we get, um, you know, you get more idea of how dirty it is, obviously. Now, let me just pop the hood. Pop the hood. Pop the engine cover, whatever it's called. So we've got a few jobs to do on this car. We need to tidy up in here a little bit. It's it's a good honest engine bay, apart from that and that. What is that? Some what is that? Some resonator delete or something. Look at that. Look at that. I've got to fix that. Oh, oh you know, that has to be fixed. Well, you cannot leave it like that. And um, you know, Dan won't, but I if I can help him and fix things, that'll be really cool. Uh, I'm not too keen on that either. Just as soon as you open the engine bay up, it just looks dodgy to me. This needs a good clean out um, and detail and dress, which won't be difficult. So we'll get all that done. Um, oh, the paintwork is really heavily contaminated and rough, so we need to clay it. We need to, there's a blend there that we need to try and feather in a little bit. This roof needs to be repainted, no doubt about that. It's been painted by a builder um, with poor edge work. So, that would probably need to be repainted, but we'll polish it anyway. And this, the paint here is terrible. You can see the texture in that paint under that clear coat. Forgive my dirty finger now, I've been scrubbing away at stuff today. Um, so yeah, there's all this overspray in there as well, which is just really sloppy work. It's been painted when it was painted. No, it's still glossy though, which is good. So I'm just gonna make it look as good as I can. I've tried to adjust the door heights for Dan because he was saying they were off, but they didn't seem too bad. But I've tweaked them slightly and they seem fine. Windscreen um, wipers are fine, front and back. I'm gonna get all this mess out and put it in the carry bag because that always bugs me. If we go to the front, uh, these things open, where's the switch? There is it, there it is. This is really nice and tidy actually in here, but I will clean it all again. Just as much dirt out as I can. This tire's just been used and not clean. That really bugs me. So that's gonna to have to come out. We'll clean that up and dress that and then, you know, put some nice BS spray all over the skull so it looks nice a bit richer. We'll see if we can just polish those up a bit to remove some of the yellowing. I'm not gonna wet sand them because Dan can do all that. Um, once you wet sand off the lacquer, game over really you keep you be you need to re them um i'm going to take these seats out take that steering wheel off and try and refurbish this steering wheel refinish it sand it all because it's rough filler it try and get it smooth and then spray it see how we get on with that he's got a replacement gear knob so we're good there there's some work that needs to be done up here can you see that chalkiness in the headliner look at that where it's water water is ingressed in so I need to investigate the sunroof, open it all up, make sure that none of those channels, usually on sunroofs you have, you know, two rubber pipes or pipes running down the A pillars and the C pillars, don't you? Normally, if they go down the B pillars on these, I don't know, I imagine it's the C pillars, and they get blocked and it sits at an angle, fills up with debris, and then blocks and then the water fills up till it goes over the edge of the seal line and then leaks down onto the um, headliner, which is what's happened. And then it chokes it out, you know, it's all stained. So can I fix that? I don't know. We'll have a go though. Uh, we'll get the seats out, wet vac it all, try and do something with a musky smell, give it a really good clean and dress all in here. Get years of dirt off of all these seats. It's a lovely car. It's a really lovely, beautiful car. Obviously I love these 996s, so I'm a bit biased. We'll scrub down the front um, windscreen if we get time, put a glass sealant on the front. After we've decontaminated it and polished it, we will put down a nice durable um, sealant on the paintwork, not a ceramic coating, because if it does need paintwork, you can't get that coating off. We'll scrub these out, but 
this is all that white stuff is oxidization on the plastic or whatever it is something like that and just chuck silicon if i pack this out with silicon grease it sort of sucks it all in and it really lasts so yeah, even the little grease on my thumb makes it better but silicon grease will does a great job on those um rest of this leather's not too bad really that's what you'd expect i'm not going to play around and paint this I might just give it a really good clean, see if I can take some of that shine out of it. It's good. Under here, we'll get these pedals nice and clean. That's okay. Actually, that's fine. You wouldn't need to mess around. Oh, but he's got, he's got a bodge in there, isn't he? Oh, no, he hasn't. It's his other car he's got a bodge. So this pedal, that accelerator pedal, is fine. Is that cracked? These normally crack. No. So we'll just clean these pedals off. We'll get the inside good. It's a couple more jobs. Back's always going to be mint because no one ever goes in there. But we'll get all that clean. We'll get that closed. Um, don't know what I've done with the keys. It's not too smart, is it? Um, just to help me remember what I've got to do, I always write it down on a little bit of... Um, I've written it on my board, so I know what I've got to do. Uh, sort out all the overspray on the seals, uh, head, headlights, see if I can just buff them aggressively and slowly and see if I can take that yellowing out without removing all of the whatever clear coats on them. Steering wheel, that's going to be fiddly and take a bit of time, but I'll, you know, that will be the, one of the last jobs. Carpet extraction, headliner, that's going to be very fiddly. Might not be able to fix that. Um, don't know, actually, it's a vinyl headliner that's stained with mineral deposits from water going into it. So how, I don't think you're going to be able to get that out of there. So all you can really do is spray chemical on it, you know, a vinyl cleaner, and brush it and then wipe it with a damp microfiber. So I've never had to tackle mineral stains in headliners before. So the reality is it might not come out. Don't know if anyone's got any experience with that, let me know. The door alignment, I think I've fixed now. Valve stems, it didn't have any valve stems in, but Dan told me where they were. I've put those on. Decon and polish. Uh, and the airbag warning light. I've got a phone. Uh, a friend of mine, Aaron, if you're watching, he's got a uh, laptop with software that can remove that warning light, turn it off. But... Um, so I'll try that. It might not clear though. It might be on for a reason, you know. <laughs> so you're trying to clear it, but it's a genuine open circuit rather than it was an open circuit. I'll probably pre-wash with this. So tomorrow morning, I will spray the car first thing and cover it in this. It's not going to be too hot tomorrow. I think there's going to be a bit of cloud cover. So I'll spray it all over first thing in the morning, let it dwell for half an hour. And this stuff is going to eat away at any tar deposits, but it's not, it's not that aggressive a product. Um, it needs to sit there for a long time um, to do its thing. It really does, actually. That's, that's probably the reason that I won't be buying more of it, but at least it's safe. You know, it's a safe product. Um, and you can incorporate it into your routine. So I'll put it on there and do a couple of other jobs um, while I'm waiting pre blast it off then i won't need to pre-wash the car after i've yeah you know, i'll pre-wash it with the, the vasco then i'll cover it back over in in gsf or i might even cover it back over in gs probably gsf will do it doesn't matter and then just scrub the head out of everything you know brush it brush all the things out really clean it quite heavily oh um perhaps after i've done the vasco pre-wash i'll go over it with a fallout remover um, just let that soak in, um, you know, do its thing on the on the fallout. And I bet there'd be tons. It'd be interesting to see. I bet there's tons. Uh, blast all that off, then put the, the soap and the foam all over it, contact wash it and all, because that'll help remove some of the fallout. Then when it's clean, get a clay towel or a big, big lump of clay and try and clay it as quickly as you can. It's really rough, needs good clay then get crack on with the polishing. And I'll probably do the polishing outside because a lot of you ask me, John, can you polish outside? Well, you don't really want to, but you can. Um, it 
tomorrow might be not be the best day to prove you can polish outside. I know you know you, you can anyway, just because I think there's a little bit of rain forecast, so I might switch switch this around. This one needs cleaning as well. Um, so yeah, there you go. I'm going to really look forward to that. What are you going to do on the paintwork? Well, I don't think I'm going to cut and finish the car because it needs paint on the roof and one of the rear quarters. Because um, that paint that's been done, well, we'll see after I polished it, it might be okay, but I think Danny will probably want to get that done now and again anyway. So what's the point in doing a full cut and finish? I'll probably just S20 over it all, um, you know, with a stiff pad, you know, a nice sort of medium pad, you know, a foam, a purple flex pad or something, I don't know. And, um, or even a hex green pad, whatever. Then I'll probably put, that SI Remix product on there, I could do a separate video on that. Um, I think that's gonna be really good, we'll, you know. But if it does need to come off, you could, it's not a full coating as such, so it could come off, it's not a problem. That's it, we'll dress up the tires, dress up the hell of, on the interior, cover it in dressing, get it all dressed up. It works with old cars, but dress the hell out of it, get it, get it a bit nicer. Not all, not all gonna be slimy, but just get a bit of sheen going, get a freshness back to that interior. Get it nice, you know, and it could be a good car again. It will be a good car, it's a great car. What Dan's done to it is um, just sort the suspension out and get a geo done on it, but it doesn't have coilovers. But he's had he's had all the suspension sorted out because the ride was the biggest problem. So it drives good, um, brakes are good, gearbox can be a little bit, not, it doesn't crunch or anything like that, but it can be sometimes when you're going into second and it hasn't warmed up, it can be a little bit notchy but then when it warms up it's absolutely fine apart from that the engine is smooth um yeah it's a good car steering feels quite nice it drives pretty good i think those 996s benefit from going on coilovers personally where they're there if you can the stock suspension is a bit floaty <laughs> it always is isn't it compared to coilovers but if you can get a good set of coilovers on there and i'm my one's got the uh, olims i'm very lucky that they it came with those they are fantastic but probably too expensive but even if you put a set of yellow speeds on that um, you could really set it up how you want and stiffen up the the anti-roll bars on them so you're using a slightly different anti-roll bar setup and really get the car flat then I think they drive good and um, you can either keep the stock sports seats in there and the stock steering wheel or go for a non-OEM kind of you know, track or aggressive street. They call it street, don't they? What's a stupid thing? Street. <laughs> street build. You know, I suppose mine's really a street build because it's not really hardcore enough for track. It's someone's put all that stuff in there to make it a track car, but it, it won't, you need to do more. You need to go further. <laughs> um, so there you go. Yeah, I'm looking forward to what I can achieve tomorrow and I'm hoping I hope we can really transform that car and I'll I'll try and film it I think as well and do a video for the channel. And I just want to bring that paintwork back to life so that the car really pops. Because these cars look quite good on camera when they're clean and all that. When you get them polished though, it's a different level and you can make them on camera, they'll look amazing. You can make them look brilliant. Um when you're in front of the car, it's different, isn't it? And you're there, they can still look good. Um, but that will never be a 10 out of 10 show car, but we can make it look very nice, I think. Uh, you know, very nice. So that's our aim, and to enjoy the work as well. Uh, proper detailing, that is. That's a proper 20, what, 25, 26 year old car that needs a bit of detailing love. Um, and there's lots of little things you can do on that to make it really, really good. And that's what I love doing. So there we go. Adios. Don't forget to subscribe. Over and out, Doug. Bye.